Hey guys, happy Monday and welcome to the start of another weekly vlog. I just had my home nurse come and she accessed me for the week and also she said that um, this site was healed well enough that I didn't have to keep the dressing on it anymore which is so nice. You can see that it basically burned through my skin. So now we just have a little bit of ointment and Benadryl gel on it and we're hoping that this is the end of it. And now I'm just getting ready to have a little FaceTime session with one of my very, very best EDS friends. It really stinks. She lives all the way in the UK. So we really have to schedule our FaceTime sessions since it's like 8 o'clock at night for her right now. And for me, it's like 3 p.m. We haven't even met many times, maybe two or three times. But you know when you just meet somebody and you just know that they're like a total kindred spirit? Yeah, that is her. She is just amazing. And it's just so uplifting to talk to her. Good morning, guys. It is Tuesday morning. This time it is actually the morning. Usually when I say good morning, it's like 3 p.m. We are in the car on our way to a couple of doctor's appointments. What else is new? We actually have two appointments today. One is in Boston and one is in Rhode Island. So it's going to be a very long day. But I am seeing a new GI doctor. I don't really have a GI doctor here at home who's following me and obviously I should especially with the feeding tube it's always a little bit nerve-wracking seeing a new doctor you just never really know how it's gonna go but this guy comes highly recommended by my cardiologist and we've been waiting so many months to get in to see them and then luckily my other appointment is physical therapy because I'm sure I'm gonna need it after today <laughs> all right you guys we just saw the doctor and his nurse practitioner they actually saw us for like what like two and a half hours and they were fantastic i cannot even like tell you they had so many different ideas and they knew a lot about eds they've seen a lot of eds patients they've seen a lot of patients with tethered cord so they were familiar with that kind of neurological side of everything. And it is just so good to know that there are some doctors here in Boston who understand the EDS and mast cell and some of these other complications. And so now we start the journey to Rhode Island. I've been working off like maybe three hours of sleep. So I don't know how much I will be working out today. I just woke up in the dark car at noon. I guess I fell asleep on the way home and my mom just didn't want to wake me up. How long have I been in here? <laughs> Oops. Today was definitely a long, weird day. I have never really been able to sleep in the car before, but apparently now I can. They just left me outside in the car for like the last two hours. I don't know if that's like an act of love or an act of neglect. That is just too funny. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would elaborate a little bit on how my GI appointment went and what we kind of decided on as our plan. Phase one, starting right now, we are going to increase my dose of mirtazapine. Mirtazapine is the medication that I take to help me to fall asleep, but apparently it's also a medication that they use quite often to treat chronic nausea. So the hope is that if we increase the dose, I will not only get better sleep, but I will be less nauseous, which would be amazing. I also really appreciated the fact that he wanted to work with the medication that I was already on. He really understood my wariness to try any new medication because of my mast cell issues. Although he doesn't really specialize in mast cell, he understands it enough to know how to kind of work around it. Phase two of the plan, I do have some x-rays to get done. I have to wait for a day when I feel especially sick so that they can x-ray my digestive system and see just kind of what's going on in there. I am also going to have another test that is going to check the strength of my pelvic floor. Without getting too far into details, they are pretty worried about 
the strength of my pelvic floor. Apparently those nerves just really are not firing at all, which they said is something that isn't very uncommon in EDS patients, especially EDS patients who have had tethered cord surgery, which I've had twice along with a lot of other lumbar surgeries. So that is definitely not really a surprise to anybody. Then, when my neck is a little bit more healed, we will go ahead and do an upper endoscopy, as well as a test where they thread a little NG tube, a little tube up the nose, down into the stomach, and they will use it to test the different pressures in my esophagus and, you know, what's going on when I swallow. And we do want to do one more barium swallow study. Even though I'm allergic to barium, we are going to try to just pre-medicate and hope for the best because we do want to kind of get to the bottom of my swallowing issues. They were so nice about it though. They like really didn't want to rush me. I was kind of afraid, honestly, that I would walk in and like their first priority would be to get me the heck off of the feeding tube. And that definitely wasn't the case. They were really willing to do things on my own time and really work with me on how I am feeling and how the mast cell is going and when I'm ready to do each test. I was definitely very, very impressed. I am super excited right now because I am a huge nerd and I just got some of the stones in the mail for the pill locket. I honestly can't wait until those lockets start to arrive because like these are so beautiful. It's going to be really interesting to kind of see which ones are you guys' favorites because I know I have my favorites. Something I've learned from having an Etsy shop is some of my best sellers aren't necessarily the ones that I think are the best. It's just kind of funny how that works. Here is a super super quick sneak peek. Okay, that's it. You guys are going to have to wait now until the lockets arrive. And I am going to go to bed because I am exhausted. Oh, hey guys. Happy Wednesday. I am just putting the finishing touches on some Etsy orders and some commissions. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for your order. I will be shipping this out in the next couple days. Oh, and I also got to work with magnetic clasps for the first time, which was really fun. I had a commission from a nurse and her friend who needed something a bit more durable. So we came up with magnetic clasps, which is super cool. But now I am done with all the orders, so I get to reward myself with a fun project that I have been wanting to work on. My hair is driving me insane. I don't have any elastic bands. Okay. Um, sweatpants tie. That is going to have to do. Um, I don't know if you guys remember a couple months ago when I had my surgery, when I was down in Maryland, I picked a bunch of little wildflower, daisy looking flowers. I picked a bunch of those and I pressed them. And they are finally dried out enough for me to start to use. I have decided to cast some of them in resin and turn them into pendants. I've already done a bit of a trial run with these. I don't have the finished product anymore as it is around my best friend's neck, but you guys will see what I mean. It turned out really cool, but it was kind of light and it was a little bit hard to see the flower because it was so white. So I was trying to think of different ideas for maybe adding a background to it. And then I came up with the idea of maybe adding a stone to the back. So I have two little black agate stones here that I ordered for those pill lockets. They were supposed to have a bit more stripe to them. I thought they would look like zebra stripes, but these two ended up being pretty much just black. So I think that I'm going to try to set these as the background to some of the flowers and hopefully it'll make the flower stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm making sure I have no rings on because resin ruins basically everything it touches. And I'm making sure to follow the number one rule of resin, and that is always to use equal parts of the resin and the hardener. One of the perks of having a chronic illness is that you always have access to lots of syringes. I'm just gonna mix equal parts of resin and hardener. Mix those around for a couple minutes. Good 
Good morning, you guys. It is actually not morning. I am having a friend over today. I'm just waiting for her to arrive. We met on Instagram and we both have EDS and feeding tubes and similar complications. And we just happen to live 15, 20 minutes away from each other. So I'm really excited to see her again. We've only met up once before in person. But I thought in the meantime, I would show you guys a little sneak peek on how some of those little resin flowers were turning out. Okay, so these three I've already taken out of the molds. They're still kind of pliable. They're not really totally set, but I wanted to use the molds again, so I was impatient. Um, this one is like a little oval, you can see. Oops, this one's like a little teardrop shape. And this one is obviously a circle. And then we have more setting over here. This is how that little daisy in front of the agate stone turned out, which is pretty cool. They gave me so much trouble with air bubbles though. This one, I added more resin and I'm hoping I can just fill in the air bubble on that one. Yeah, and so this one I tried layering some different flowers. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like how that looks, but I'm just experimenting here. It's just a special little reminder of that time I remember after surgery, like looking out my window every single day and seeing the flowers outside and really wanting to pick them. So as soon as I was feeling better, I went out and picked a bunch of flowers and pressed them. It's kind of a little sentimental memory for me. Ah, my friend just left and we had a really lovely time. It's so nice to get to know another EDS patient in the area. Most of the EDS patients that I know are pretty scattered all across the country. Actually. All across the world and that's why I get so excited to like go down south and go to Maryland and see my doctor because I get to see a lot of other EDS patients there but I really don't get to see a whole lot when I'm home so it's really cool to have a local EDS friend and also she's super into a lot of the jewelry and art and photography and stuff that I'm into I really can't wait to see her again but seriously guys oh I don't know if this new dose change in my medication is going to work out for me. I feel pretty gross so far. I just feel kind of foggy and hazy and actually like more nauseous. I kind of feel like I just woke up from a nap or something. Like I just definitely don't feel well rested like I'm supposed to. I feel pretty much the opposite. It's only been two nights and I feel like that's not a fair trial, especially since I didn't really get a whole lot of sleep the last couple nights because of my schedule, but I am really dragging. It's also very possible that I've just kind of hit a wall with everything that I've been doing lately. My body probably just needs to recover a little bit. Hi guys, I'm in a lot of pain. Up until now, I have not tried the CBD oil or the vitamin E oil on the back of my neck and shoulders mostly because it is so painful that the idea of rubbing anything into it is kind of horrible but I have just reached a point where the pain is just it's unbearable. A lot of you guys have been so sweet, like offering up comments and suggestions about what might be causing some of my pain. I don't know, I kind of just wanted to say I know that there are a lot of different names for a lot of the different pains and the different nerves. At this point, it's not really on my list of priorities to put a name to that pain. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like I kind of have enough diagnoses right now and I can't really focus my energy on going after another one. But like I said, right now it's kind of unbearable and for some reason the oral pain medication doesn't really seem to do anything. So I'm going to grit my teeth and I am going to try rubbing some of the CBD oil on the back of my neck and shoulders and back just to see if I can get some relief so that hopefully I can get a little bit of sleep tonight. Even though we just upped my sleeping medications for these last two nights, I've still only been getting like three hours of sleep and then I've been waking up in pain, but hopefully if this helps, I can get some better sleep. I do have to sleep in the full neck brace still, which really, really just adds to the problem. I mean, honestly, even like leaning up 
against a pillow is really painful or wearing my hair down that's why I've been wearing my hair in a bun for like a couple months hey okay, well here goes nothing I guess I think I'm just gonna drop it onto my shoulders and try to rub it in from there so I've had the oil on for probably like an, about an hour now and it's helping a little bit. It is taking the edge off, which is really nice because nothing else seems to do that. I'm just having a difficult night. Sometimes this is reality too. Um, I try to share as much of my life with you guys as possible and I just reached a point where I'm not getting sleep and then I'm in a lot of pain and because of the pain I'm not sleeping and not sleeping makes the pain worse. <laughs> this new dose of medication I think I'm having a hard time adjusting to it. I can actually remember when I first started it I had a hard time adjusting to it as well and it did make me a bit more emotional as I'm feeling tonight. It's a little bit hard for me. I think I'm a bit of a control freak sometimes where I just don't want to admit that something is completely out of my control and that there's something I can do for it. I always just love to feel like there's something that I am doing to help my situation and this pain has really been knocking me down and I'm still in a lot of pain with my knee to be honest. I know I haven't talked about that in a while because <laughs> I've just been trying to not think about it. I've been trying to be honest about my journey with pain, trying to heal that mind-body connection and I really need to be honest I think with myself and <laughs> with you guys about how much pain I'm really in. And I think that needs to be my starting point. I think I need to acknowledge that there is never a day that I'm not in pain. And it's probably like seven out of 10 most days. I cannot remember the last day that I didn't have a headache. I can't remember the last day that I haven't had joint pain that my shoulders and elbows and wrists and fingers and back and hips and knees and ankles and toes they all hurt all of the time and that's the reality of EDS I can't remember the last day I didn't have nerve pain I can't remember the last time that someone has touched me and it didn't hurt it's just my reality and sometimes I forget even that it's not normal because I'm so used to it. But sometimes that just all catches up with me and it's just too much. But I am thankful that the CBD oil is actually helping a little bit and taking the edge off. And I think partially that's why I'm a little bit emotional that something is actually helping a little bit. Yeah, that's where I am right now. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow I will wake up and I will do it all again and I will go to physical therapy and I will work my hardest because that's what I have to do. And that's my job as an EDS patient. Sorry for blubbering on and whatever. <laughs> I think I just needed to talk about it with someone and who better to talk about it than you guys. <sighs> I'm gonna try to catch some rest. Good night, you guys. Well, that PT session was rough. I never even made it past the manual therapy part, so I didn't get to do anything in the gym. I just had a shoulder that was really out of place and my first rib, and she was trying to get that in place, but that's also the area that I have like a ton of like nerve pain. So when she got my shoulder back in place, I had like a huge mast cell reaction and got all blotchy and itchy and like, couldn't breathe and that set off a dysautonomia reaction. <laughs> my heart rate went super high and then it like just kind of tanked 
and I went into bradycardia. And then that's time I played vertigo attack. And that was a fun day. But look at this like super cool new bag that I have. I saw someone on Instagram with this and I was like, yep, I definitely need that. So now I don't have to like have all my stuff weighing on my shoulder, which is gonna save me a lot of pain. And I think it looks pretty darn cool. So up until now, I have never really used like a pill organizer. I, we always just kind of dispensed my pills as I needed them. I kind of wasn't on a specific schedule because my schedule every day was pretty different. So of course I had like my morning meds and then the meds I take before bed. But the time I wake up and go to bed each day is pretty different, so I didn't necessarily have them scheduled out to a T. My mom has been helping me manage my medications for a while because I can't crush them myself. But she's actually going away for the week, so I decided that this was a good time to get organized. So I got this fancy new pill organizer that I'm kind of excited to use. Is that sad? Oh well. I never can't believe that this is how many pills I take in a day. That's not even including any of my liquid meds, my nebulized meds, or my IV meds. Yikes. But hey, it is what it is. And I really only take things that I desperately need. My mom and my sister left today to go down to South Carolina for a week. So it's just me and my dad for the week. I guess it's daddy-daughter bonding week. But anyway, today, I just really need to take a chill day. And I'm taking on a project that I'm pretty sure I'm going to regret in a couple hours. Remember in like fourth grade when it was like super cool to go away on vacation and come back with a hair wrap? Do you remember those? It was just like one strand of your hair was like wrapped in embroidery thread and there was like charms on it. I was obsessed with those things when I was a kid. I always wanted to get one. I thought it was the coolest thing in the whole world. And I still feel that way. I still think it's the coolest thing in the whole world. So today, I'm just gonna give myself a hair wrap and this is going to take forever but that's okay because I have no plans Okay, it's a lot later now and my camera died, which saved you guys from having to sit through like four hours worth of time lapse. My hair is much, much longer than I thought it was. I guess since I have kind of curly hair and I always keep it in like a bun or a braid lately, I didn't really realize how much my hair had grown. So like, look at how long this hair wrap ended up being. It's like already a nuisance. Like. <laughs> it goes down to probably like my mid thigh this is insanity but it came out pretty cool it's got like put like little charms on it when look at the end I just have like some cool beads and like a sun and a little elephant and a little feather this is ridiculous and very unpractical and I'm 100% okay with that. My eight-year-old self would be so proud. Yeah, but that literally took like four hours. So <laughs> thank goodness for audiobooks. Hello, people. It is Sunday, and I should technically already be editing and uploading this vlog right now. But I got to spend the day with two of my very, very close friends. So sorry, not sorry. <laughs> It's really, really nice to be able to enjoy having people over again and really looking forward to visits. Before, when I wasn't feeling very well, it was just stressful to think about having anyone over and it was so tiring. But now I am genuinely starting to enjoy social situations again, which is pretty nice. But guys, guess what? The very first shipment of my little lockets have arrived. Look at how pretty the gold is. I can't wait to pair this. 
with like a gold stone or a tiger's eye stone. So cool. And also I demolded all of my little resin pieces. This is the one that turned out the best. So I turned this one into a pendant for myself. And these ones I might end up turning into jewelry to put on my Etsy shop or to send to friends. I'm not quite sure yet. This one, I backed it with a black agate stone. I pressed the stone into the mold as the resin was hardening to get this really pretty effect. But anyway, I will be getting more of these lockets hopefully in the mail on Monday. And I will likely have them up in my Etsy shop sometime next week. Though I do have to like test them out and measure them to see what size pills fit. Because I know it fit my Benadryl, but when I tried to put my Midadrin in there, Midadrin is something that I take and it's kind of thick, it wouldn't close. So I want to see maybe if it would fit a capsule. I'm not quite sure. I kind of think maybe not. So there is still a little bit of experimentation to do before I start sending these out to you guys. But I seriously, I cannot wait to start putting them together. I think I'm going to just list it so you guys can pick the color and the stone and whether or not you want like a moon on it. Instead of making a bunch ahead of time and then maybe not having the one you want in stock. Anyway, thank you for coming along on another week with me. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, it would be awesome if you would subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!